Hello and welcome to this edition of The Interview. Today, our guest is Thomas Pesquet, French astronaut, raw celebrity here in France. He has spent six months in space already, 197 days to be exact, and he's going back. Thomas Pesquet, hello. Welcome uh, to our program. Thank um, you. Very happy to be here. And so, well... You're expected to uh, fly back to the ISS uh, in uh, spring and indeed, well, we have a, a launch, uh, a historic launch. This is really uh, the embodiment of this, you know, this commercial crew program by the NASA and SpaceX. Absolutely, yeah. This is a milestone, I think, in the, in the way we're exploiting the ISS. We've been we've been doing it for 20 years, but now it's a it's really a new page that we're turning. The the partnership between uh, the private sector and the public sector. Um, it's still funded by NASA. Exploration is made on the public budget, uh, but now we give more autonomy to uh, contractors to to design and build the hardware that we'll be using uh, on all flights today to the ISS, but in the near future to a more distant destinations uh, in space. So you're currently uh, in Houston, Texas. You are training, you're getting ready uh, for this mission in spring. And of course, uh, you're also getting ready uh, to fly on Crew Dragon, which is this new spacecraft. How exciting is that for starters? This is new spacecraft. This doesn't happen to all astronauts, right? No, it doesn't happen very often. I'm very privileged to to have a chance to first have flown on the Soyuz, which is the reliable workhorse that that enabled us to to simply uh, keep the program, the ISS program, going for the last 10 years, 10, 20 years after the retirement of the space shuttle. So it's very reliable technology, but mostly from the 70s. Um, and now today, it's state of the art, uh, very modern technology, you know, big, huge flat screens, uh, lots of automation. Um, so it's really comparable for a pilot um, to fly on an old plane and then suddenly you fly on the most recent, most modern plane that, that uh, technology has to offer. So it's very, very, very exciting and I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to my next mission. How, how different is it? I mean, I, I can imagine that uh, Soyuz that was designed in the 70s must be quite an analog uh, spacecraft. I mean, does, does Crew Dragon fly itself or do you still have to, to work? How does it work? <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is very automated. Like you say, it's so. The first, I think, the first major difference is that the information um, is regrouped and is analyzed and synthesized for the for the crew to look at. So you only have a, a few displays, you know, as opposed to hundreds of dyes and gauges that you have to interpret by yourself. There's already a layer of interpretation on on the information. The spacecraft tells you this has failed. Um, and this is what it looks like. Other, I mean, compared to you having to look at the pressure, or you having to look at the voltage and conclude for yourself what the failure case is. So that's the first thing. And it's the same in modern aviation. Um, and then now there's a, there's a lot of automation. Like you said, the spacecraft basically, it does fly itself, but so did the Soyuz, to be honest. Um, you can still fly manually, the, the Dragon, but it's only in a very, very degraded case. Um, and even if you do fly it manually, you actually fly it manually through the touch screen. So it's, it's actually a little bit of a, of a difference and of a, of a jump to make for a pilot. You don't have a stick and rudder. You, don't, you only have a flat screen and you're flying it like an iPad. So it takes some, some getting used to. Um, we all remember, I mean, in France, actually, we, we, we were lucky enough we, we could actually follow you in your adventure last time. I mean, there was even a, a comic book, which is a quite remarkable, where we see how you get prepared for this flight. Is it different this time? I mean, for example, you know, you have to learn a new spacecraft, of course, which is Crew Dragon. But as for the rest, is it as much work as it was the first time? No, it, it isn't. Um, and I'm glad because this time I only have one year uh, to get ready for the mission. And the first, the first time it took me um, almost seven years to be ready for the mission. So there's no way I could have done the same amount of work uh, in just one year. Um, but luckily, I don't have to learn Russian from start. I already know you know, the spacesuit for going out on a spacewalk, this hasn't changed, so I still need some training on it, um, but really mostly it's, it's refreshers. Um, the, the station hasn't changed, there's been some, some upgrades and some updates to the system, but 
post flotation. Um, so now this time around, I'm focusing on the crew, crew dragon, like you rightly said, um, on the on the science experiments, uh, on, on getting ready physically, um, and then maintaining my knowledge and refreshing my knowledge from last time. So it's a little bit more, I'd say, relaxed, but also a little bit more compressed in time. So. My, my schedule is still pretty packed, unfortunately. <laughs> so pack schedule, you were saying, uh, pack schedule. W what exactly are you going to be doing up there? Do you know what kind of research you're actually going to be conducting on board the ISS this time? Uh, yeah, I do. Generally speaking, I don't have the detail of, of the hundred or so or more. I don't really know experiments I'll be doing because this is all being uh, prepared by the different agencies, by ESA, by CNES, by NASA, by the, the international partners. Um, I know there's a lot of focus now on uh, on um, medical science. Uh, we're looking at uh, how the, the viruses and microbes behave in microgravity. We know there's a difference. Uh, we know it helps us target good candidates for vaccines sometimes. Uh, we look at drugs that could help cure cancer, certain specific cancers. We, lose, we look at muscle loss and bone loss. Obviously, this is a staple of, um, of ISS research. Uh, and now we look more and more at material science as well. Uh, metal alloys are, uh, are a big topic right now on board the ISS, and also foams and emulsions are also very popular. So there's going to be a mix of all those topics, and that's also what makes ISS research so exciting, is that you do a little bit of everything. And how about returning? I mean, we are actually at a time which is interesting in, in society across the world. Now there have been uh, confinements, people have been stuck at home. I mean, you're, you're going to go voluntarily and, uh, and, and be stuck in the ISS for six months. How, how do you feel about that? I mean, are you happy to go back? I can imagine you probably are. But, you know, can you tell us why? <laughs> why? Because, well, so first of all, it's a, it's a little bit different. The first time, I didn't really know. It was my childhood dream. Uh, I worked a lot for it, but I didn't really know what I signed myself up for. So I was very excited, but I, I had no idea. This time, I know. Uh, I know it's not always easy to be up there by yourself or with your crew. I know it's long to be six months away from your loved ones. Um, so I, I, I know what I, I know what I have to prepare for, and that, that makes it different. Um, but also, I think I think I'm still very much willing to go because um, because of the sense of purpose that you get when you're on board the ISS. Because everybody, every morning when you when everybody wakes up, you you know what you're here for. You know. Um, that you're taking part in something that's bigger than you. You know that you're working as part of a team and the team is working for you. So it's very, very exciting. It's, it's, it's really nice to have that sense of purpose, that sense of teamwork, that sense of being in an, in an expedition. Um, and I haven't found that on the ground after that mission. So I'm looking forward to feeling that again. You, you did take, you, you spent a lot of time making sure that uh, the people on Earth could actually follow what you were doing. You were very, very uh, present on uh, social media. Um, are you going to do the same thing this time? Are you going to make, you know, people, young people, especially, for example, kids who dream of space, live this adventure with you again? I'm going to try. I'm going to try as best as I can. Um, it, it wasn't easy the first time. It took me a lot of time on top of what we're already doing on board the space station, because obviously you don't get two hours a day to take pictures and, and tweet, because um, you have something else to do all the time. So it's, it's, on your, it's on your sleep time. It's on your Sunday time. But, but it was a pleasure to do it for me. Um, I'm going to try to do it as much as I can. Um, I would, I've, I'd like to find something new. You know, I don't want to redo the same thing because people are going to be bored. They're, they're, going, they're going to say, look, oh, we've seen the pictures of the Earth before. You know, people get used to things really quickly. Um, so I'm currently trying to find maybe something new. I have no great ideas, but maybe if you have some, if your viewers have some, then I'd, I'd be happy to hear them. OK, we'll try and think about that. Another question. You're in Houston right now. Uh, NASA has been rather ambitious these past few uh, months. I mean, there have been announcements. We will know about Project Artemis, for example, the SLS, the Gateway, um, projects to go back to the moon. I mean, obviously, there's been the coronavirus, and there's also a change in American politics. Uh, there's a, a new president moving into the White House. Uh, do you think all these projects are going to go on? Are we going to be on the moon by 2024? <laughs> so the question was there, are we going to be on the moon by 2024? I mean, regardless of the, the administration, it's a very ambitious program. Uh, even technically, you know, it's it's space, so it can go south on you very fast. You're, you're 
So, so the question was already there. Um, now, with a change of administration, it's it's difficult for us to really know what's going to happen. Um, as, as as a European employee of ESA, we know we have agreements with NASA. Uh, we know NASA has been enjoying bipartisan, bipartisan support. Um, so we'll see we'll see what happens in the future. I think I think we've we've secured some good cooperations for the future. We've signed some agreements. We've we've committed on the European side. Our American friends have committed. Um, so I'm hoping that things will continue moving in the right direction. Thomas Pesquet, thank you very much for speaking to us. Of course, we'll be following your mission in detail and we'll be uh, happy to see whatever you have to send us. We'll have to think about new ways of telling that story. And uh, well, thanks again and good luck with your training in Houston. I can imagine you have a lot of work. Thank you, viewers, for watching this program. Of course, you can see it again on France24.com.